Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Leland Baptist. I am one of the private bankers with Lee Chandler, and today we are going to talk about the power of a land contract. So the first thing you should know about a land contract is that it gives, whether it's an investor um, or individual, the ability to hopefully control the property. And normally, if it's recorded, which it should be recorded, um, gives that person the ability to um, have the deed in their name too. All right. Now, something that's something that you should know about land contracts is that both options and land contracts are methods that developers use to control a property. Okay. Um, so it's very, very important to keep that in mind. Now, if you are a, a investor and you're looking to control property um, outside of this, you know, the regular assignments and purchase agreements, um, but maybe you want to have uh, some type of owner financing or seller financing on a longer period of time, hopefully like a year or so more, what you're looking at is you're probably, probably gonna look at a land contract, especially if you have money as a down payment, okay? So that brings us to the very, very first part. A land contract, 90% of, of the time requires some type of down payment, okay? And it makes sense because if you're expecting someone to record the land contract, you wanna make sure you give them some type of monetary benefit um, to basically putting that, that property or that contract in your name, okay? Or that deed in your name. Now, be careful. Uh, keep in mind the less than 20% rule. What that means is that if your down payment is less than 20% of the purchase price, which is fantastic, um, what that means though is that the land contract is still in play. For Marion County, what happens is whenever a individual uh, who is the purchaser pays the vendor, and so a vendor and purchaser basically means that the vendor is a person who is um, giving the land contract to the buyer, right? Hope that makes sense. And so the buyer is going to exchange, let's say 20% of a down payment to the vendor, okay? Um, if that takes place, 20%, 20% or more, it actually becomes a mortgage at that point. It's, it is no longer considered a land contract. It is now a mortgage. Now this is put in place to protect consumers um, through Indiana because Indiana is, is a very, very pro housing and, ho and home ownership state. So you wanna make sure that your down payment or the, the down payment that you're giving to the purchaser or vice versa um, is less than 20%. If it's more than 20%, it becomes now a mortgage. Now one of the benefits as well with a land contract is that you have the ability to have what's called forfeiture, okay? So <clears throat> what that means is if for one of my properties, um, I put on a land contract to Joe, okay? And Joe gives me a down payment of let's say $5,000. If Joe you know, doesn't pay me a month seven, seven, um, on the seventh month of the year, for whatever reason, um, I can go ahead and forfeit um, our land contract agreement. I can basically take him off the deed completely, um, you know, get him out, get him out of the property, or, or just revoke all ownership rights that he had to the property because he defaulted on one of the payments. I can only do that if Joe has not paid more than twenty percent of the purchase price. Okay, and that brings us to the recording of the contract. Now, you want to make sure that if you're being fair, that you are going to record the contract. Uh, too often I see people who um, strike up a deal, shake hands, have signed papers, um, but they never record the contract. You want this contract or this piece of paper to, uh, or this document to have some type of notary stamp on it. Please do not skimp the notary stamp. Do not be so cheap that you don't, you know, you can't pay the money for a notary. You want to have the notary, the notary stamp on there. You want to go down to the county and record it because that's what you should do if you agree to have a land contract. You want to record that land contract, okay? Um, now, you can still record a land contract without exchanging the deed, okay? You can just record that contract um, in reference to that house without, without necessarily having to um, transfer title or deed over to someone's name. It's solely up to you on how that works out between you and, and the other party. I would always suggest that it's in your best benefit to exchange title, 
right? Um, or exchange the deed, but that's, so, that's solely up to the parties, all right? Now, oftentimes what happens is the benefit for, with a land contract is the purchaser becomes responsible for taxes and insurance, okay? You, are, you, you basically get all the rights as if you were owning, owning the property. Remember when we spoke about uh, the lease option, the lease option, you don't have the rights as, as if you own the property, you're leasing, okay? So things such as taxes and insurance, you are not responsible for. However, on a land contract, um, especially if it's written out in plain sight and in plain English, you are responsible for the taxes and insurance of that property. And we spoke about this earlier a little bit when it comes to the vendor. Um, so the vendor is a person who owns the property now and then they're giving the land contract to the purchaser, okay? There's a few things that you wanna make sure you have in your land contract, and it's very, very important. You first wanna make sure that there is some type of interest rate, okay? The reason that someone will have a land contract and not necessarily um, a regular mortgage with you know, PNC Bank or Chase Bank is probably because of their credit. So what that means is the benefit for them is that they are willing to pay a, a higher interest rate to have rights or ownership to a home and to a property, okay? So this is an important part of a land contract. The next part is the contract price. Believe it or not, the purchase price and the contract price are two different things, okay? The contract price could in fact, uh, normally is less than the purchase price, okay? The purchase price just means the, all in comp the, 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 t the full total of what that price of that property is worth. So for example, I have a property um, and I, I, I decided to put on a land contract to Joe for $100,000, all right? Now, that particular property, I, I'm putting the Joe for $100,000. Joe may give me a down payment of $5,000. Well, the contract price at that point drops from 10, 000, I mean 100,000 to 95,000 because it's subtracting his, his down payment, okay? And that's what that is. So the contract price normally is gonna be less than, than the purchase price. Keep in mind that under the state's requirements that this purchase price, um, if, that if John were, were to pay more than 20% of the purchase price or the principal in, in our example, uh, then it's actually considered a mortgage if I wanted to actually evict or get John out of the property or forfeit the property. I have to go through the legal ramifications of the county and state which will then look at this as a mortgage. I would have to foreclose on John if he paid more than 20% uh, just throughout the, the life of the land contract. Now, if you wanted to protect yourself against that as a vendor, what you wanna do is you wanna have an interest rate to where if John is making his consistent payments, um, you know, that interest will make sure that not all of his payment goes to the principal because if, if you wanna, if you wanna pr protect yourself against that, um, you know, as, as much as possible. Now, if you're John, for example, uh, you want to have that 20%, you wanna meet that 20% as, as quick, quick as possible, uh, and hopefully you wanna go ahead and buy it. Now, one of the things that people should think about when it comes to land contracts is, it can kind of become tricky when you choose to obtain your own financing to buy the property um, fully. And the reason I'm, I'm saying this is because one, if your land contract is not uh, not recorded, it's gonna be hard for a banker or a loan officer to get you financed to buy that property. Okay, kind of makes sense, right? Now, if the land contract is recorded, then they can actually they can actually see that, okay, great, this land, land contract was, was recorded, John gave an initial down payment of whatever amount, um, great, this all goes towards that property and, and to the purchase of this property. If the land contract was recorded and the deed was put into John's name, at that point, John has, can actually go ahead and refinance out of that land contract, or which we consider a mortgage, um, off of the property and then take full ownership of the property with a new, new mortgage, okay? I, ho I hope that makes sense. Um, that's one of the benefits of a land contract. But if it's not recorded, then you may have to talk to your, to, excuse me, if, if there's no deed, put in John's name, then at that point, you wanna speak with your, with your new lender or the new bank that you're getting financing for to buy the house um, outright 
and say, hey, listen, um, I put down a, a huge down payment or a small down payment for this house. I've been living here for 12 months. I want to go ahead and buy it. But I need to make sure that you will count um, the land contract or my performance with the land contract. You know, I've given a $5,000 $5, down payment. I've made, you know, these 12 months of payments, which will equate to an additional $1,000 um, of principal taken off. I've in, I, I have invested and shown, you know, that I've invested over $6,000 uh, into the purchase of this property. Can you apply this $6,000 as if it was my down payment, as if I was purchasing um, this property um, normally through normal financing? And normally a bank will say yay or nay, okay? Get, I'll give you a quick response there. Um, there are some banks that will do it without a problem, without a hitch. There are other banks who will give you a hard time with that, but you don't know until you actually ask the question, okay? You have to ask the, the question, okay? So real quick, let's review and we'll be done here. Land contract, important parts is to have a down payment. You have to have an interest rate. There should be a contract price and there should be a purchase price. The purchase price is the, is the initial price of, of buying that property. Contract price is what is given after the, the down payment. So the difference after, after the, the uh, down payment, okay? Uh, there should be a default period. So if John misses a payment, I should give John, you know, maybe 30 days to, to catch with the payment plus whatever penalty or interest. That should be in written in plain English in our land contract. Um, I, will be, I will be listed as a vendor because I'm giving the land contract to, uh, to Bob or to John as a purchaser. Uh, John will be, requ John will be uh, required for taxes and insurance on the property. And I'll make sure that the contract is recorded. The deed can or cannot be uh, exchanged depending on um, the two parties, what they agree, what they agree upon. Um, the cool thing too is, you know, as an investor, even if I deed over the property to, to John, um, I'm not losing anything because if John defaults on the land contract, I can enforce that and I would just have to foreclose on him to uh, take the property back, okay? Um, however, if John, if I don't deed the property over to John and if John did not pay more than 20% of the purchase price, then I can go ahead and have what's called a forfeiture, which is basically me just taking that property back by enforcing a land contract, okay? And I don't, I don't have to go through any special rulings for that necessarily. Um, talk about, talked about the 20% rule, um, how that helps and benefits, um, it benefits both sides necessarily, you know, from a mortgage standpoint, but it also really, it really, really helps the consumer a lot more because with that 20%, it shows they have a vested interest and it gives them protection. Um, so this is the makeup of a land contract. If you have a land contract, you wanna make sure that um, it's recorded. And if you're gonna deed over the property, make sure you do that in the proper fa fashion. Um, I would personally wait until you find out what the exit str strategy will be for the purchaser. Are they gonna refinance the property? Um, are they gonna look to, you know, use it as something to where uh, they're going to purchase it. It solely depends on what their exit, stra exit strategy is. Um, I don't deed over properties to just anyone. It, they would have to show, you know, the consistency of them going ahead and making payments and so forth. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to, to reach out to me and I will speak with you guys on the next video.